Dar here, the Shell Tech guy. This will be about using a modified pancake die to cut and emboss a piece in one pressing. First we'll do a little demo of the embossing technique itself which is simply to put your target metal in between the urethane pad and the forming component. So we'll run that up. And five or ten tons will do it. So that gives you a nice bumped up piece there. The thinner the metal you use, the more crisp that is going to be. This was probably 24, 22 gauge, so it's a little, little mushy looking there. Now you can take you can take a part that's cut from a plain die, a flat part, and emboss it in a second step. But I developed this technique to do parts faster in one pressing. So that's the reason behind all this. Started out with soldering wire designs like this right to the face of the die. A little star is a good example. I like to use silver solder, easy silver solder because it's a permanent bond. You can also use a low temperature tin solder but that's less permanent. Un under the pressures involved here the wires can work themselves loose with repeated pressing so I like to use the silver solder. These dyes behave weirdly sometimes when you heat them up that hot so it's not always the best thing to do. I don't really recommend people trying that out uh, for their first try. Definitely not. Quite a few bad things can happen. This will work with a bare pad. It's the same exact process except the wire is now attached to your die. So that's not the best way to treat a pancake die. These dies need to be supported by solid surfaces, ideally top and bottom, like here with the press. Since it's a hardened tool steel die, if it flexes too much, which the urethane can allow it to do, they can break or crack. They like to crack from the edge of a design like this out to the side of the die. Um, so to give the die that support it needs I started making these blocks out of a solid plastic. Lexan most of the time, sometimes nylon, sometimes Delrin. Definitely never use acrylic because it will shatter one way to tell the difference uh, just with a simple test is t what I do is I'll take a hammer and just bang the corner if it chips off its acrylic plexiglass don't use it if it deforms and bends then it's Lexan and it's good for this kind of thing So I'll show some more examples of this. There's a nice Coco Pelli. The other thing that the solid plastic blocks do is they allow the metal to form at a lower pressure so it's faster to run parts that way. Less pressure on the die too which can be good, which is good. Try another Coco Kelly here. This one has run a whole lot of parts in uh, 30 gauge rusted steel. We'll try a piece of brass with it. 
sticks off a little bit, that's gonna we're gonna get away with that. Because of the urethane, that also is a little bit mushy look there. I usually run that into a harder material, which gives it a much crisper look. Such as with this little guy here. Which I made a solid nylon block for. I took the, the die with the wire soldered onto it heated that up and melted it into the nylon block which gave it a, gave it a much cleaner impressions negative impressions in the nylon block so when done that way the parts come out with a much crisper look another little thing you can do is take the embossed piece and flatten it out and press again That'll give you a look that's more like as if you had stamped it with a punch and a hammer the old-fashioned way. Here's another example of that with these pumpkins. Did the same thing. Cut it, embossed it in one pressing. Flattened it out, flipped it over, and then gave it a dome. So this, you can see this is, when the lines are pushed in like that, that's usually the back of the piece when it comes out of the die. Uh, but when you flip it over and use the back side as the front, you have crisper lines because that's the side that the wires pressed directly into. So that's what we did here and then domed it. What else? Well, that's about it. Thank you very much.